Welcome to Coast View, the show that every single day celebrates the men and women who are making Coastal Mississippi such an amazing place to live, work, and play. You know, this week was uh, was a special observance, as, as we all know, uh, Martin Luther King's birthday, a national holiday. You know, he's really celebrated all around the world. And uh, I, I think we've all had an opportunity to, to read so many of his powerful quotes. I'll share a couple here in just a second. But he earned a Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And we know of him that his, his inspiration uh, to have nonviolent resistance uh, around pushing for equal rights for black Americans is now, you know, one of the most important things ever done in America. We've made so much progress because of him. It'd be interesting to know if you could sit down with Martin Luther King today. What would he say about where we are compared with where we were? Truth is, we always have work to do. There's always going to be more work to do. But at the end of the day, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the Naval Construction Battalion Center in Gulfport posted this quote. The ultimate measure of a man is not is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. You know, I've seen that throughout my career, certainly not at the way, not in the way that Martin Luther King felt it. But, you know, when you had to take positions on editorials and do the kind of things that I saw as a publisher, and I saw some really, really brave people in the, in the community, people who were willing to stand up for what they felt was right when a lot of people were against them. And uh, you learn a lot about someone when they're in that moment. You learn a lot about their character. You learn a lot about their passion. And, uh, you know, that quote from Martin Luther King, it really is inspirational. And, it, you know, we, could, we couldn't have – we need more people who think that way, that, uh, that they, they'll stand in cha challenges and in controversy with character and in a way that's best for the community. Uh, Mississippi Power, uh, and of course, it's the power company, but it's just a powerful statement, not just because Mississippi Power co uh, posted it. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Again, Martin Luther King, that, that, is, that is so true. And my friend Susan Myers uh, Griggs posted this one. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? What are you doing for others? Man, of all the things that, that Martin Luther King said and did, some of the most important inspiration he left is a legacy around challenging us to find what our role can be to help others. You know, at the end of the day, there's so many people in our community that need help. And we're lucky, as I talk about all the time, we're a resilient community because we have so many people willing to step forward and fill gaps in the community. And, man, there are so many gaps. There are great nonprofits that do work all up and down coastal Mississippi. But there, there are never enough volunteers to do that work. But, you know, we're, we're blessed in that Hurricane Katrina and other challenges in coastal Mississippi have taught people what it means to help others. So, you know, when, you know one of the, I think, the benefits of celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday is that we get a chance to reflect on some of his most important uh, statements, some of the most important things that he provided with his leadership in terms of his legacy. And again, this one, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I, I don't think we can reflect on that enough here in coastal Mississippi. Um, I'm pleased today. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to talk about a really important effort for coastal Mississippi. It's, uh, it has to do with model trains, and we'll, get, we'll, we'll go into some detail about that here in just a second. But I've invited my friend Cynthia Minton-Walker Minton to join us here this morning. And then in the second half of the show, we're actually going to be joined by Glenn Mueller, who's president of Domino's on the coast. And he's also a pr principal investor in the train museum that we're going to be talking about here in just a second. But before we go any further, let me say good morning to my friend Cynthia. How are you doing, Cynthia? Good morning, Ricky. How are you today? I'm doing well. Listen, I saw you, you know, all those quotes are inspiring, but that one life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? You've literally, you live your life in that way, don't you? I do my best. Yes. So, so I'll go back and, you're, and, and we'll, we'll remind people, we've had conversations before, but you were involved in Lynn Meadows Discovery Center, the, the South Mississippi Pre-K for Forward Early Childhood Initiative. You were the founder of that. You're involved in United Way, 
uh, you've been a community development consultant, and uh, and I think the last time we talked, we actually were talking about uh, sidewalks on, on Highway 90 and why that's important through the Harrison County Active Living Initiative. But you have uh, you, and I haven't even scratched the surface, Cynthia, to what you've been involved with. But you've had the opportunity to see from so many different angles how many dedicated people there are in the community working to fill gaps and help people who are less fortunate, haven't you? Absolutely. And they are all doing it for the right reasons. They want to make a difference for the community that we live in. And they are going to be there when you call them, no matter how many other items are on their list that they need to complete. (laughs) Train-tastic. The last thing that I thought I'd be talking to you about is trains, (laughs) model trains. But I'm not surprised because I've watched the Mueller brothers uh, Glenn and Richard for so many years and what they've what they've done to <clears throat> amass this incredible collection. And I, I have so many of my friends who are involved in model trains. You know, you don't you, unless you're unless you sort of get zeroed in a little bit, you don't realize the wide uh, uh, appeal that these trains have and how successful the current museum has been. Uh, we'll talk about all that, but the last thing I expected to be talking to you about is model train museum. Uh, what was it, what was the appeal to you to get involved in this? Um, When I started, left education, which many people know that was my first career. I've had several now. I went into the children's museum world at the 10th largest in the world. And I began to recognize because as such, I was able to interface with some very large museums. For example, I was on the board at the Chicago Children's (coughs) Museum. And what I learned is that a full service museum, which this will be, will have elements that will reinforce education. It will be economically driven in the community and it will make a difference in the lives of those who live there. Most people know that I'm all about kids. And so there's an element of children in this, but this is also workforce development driven. It will give us a huge emphasis on STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And those are things that we know our corporations on the coast are most looking for because they are struggling to find those qualified workers. We can help with that. And at the same time, it'll be fun. And people will not recognize how much they're learning until they walked away and go, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know that. Well, I've watched the the evolution, and I want to talk a little bit about the current situation. What what is it about the current museum that created sort of this compelling case for action to really step it up? Because the the scope of and the size of this, and again, the point that you're making about having all these different elements within it, so that this full service museum that's going to really have wide appeal for in the entire United States. Well, well, again, we'll get into some of that in a second, but what is it about the current museum <clears throat> that that made it so clear that this was the, the just a natural next step? I think everyone, if they're honest, really finds model trains fascinating. Many of us have relatives who have their garage full of them or their basement, and we loved seeing them and wanted to get our hands on them or let me turn the button on as we were growing up. In some places, that's a dying hobby that we aren't seeing as much, and yet it is one that everyone that walks in bring a broad smile to their face and they're like saying, isn't that cool? The little children, the older adults, we're saying this new museum as the current one will be catering to zero to a hundred year old children. So the, so when they built this, I mean, it's a relatively small, you know, uh, location relative to where it's headed, <clears throat> but it has been very successful, hasn't it? It has. And it is one that I I know folks that say, I have to go every time my grandkids are in town because they want to go. Um, Riding a train is fun for grandparents and parents with their little ones or just watching them on there with the smiles it brings for them. So we get these opportunities to live like a child for just a few minutes when we're grownups in an environment like that. And that's what it all is about. We want to have fun and we want to make sure that well, I want to make sure always that when we are having fun, we're also learning something, no matter what age we are. I was involved in the early days of the Oro Keith Museum. And of course, I was you know, involved to, to some extent and certainly helped funding through the Knight Foundation for the Lynn Meadows Discovery Center. 
And, um, and it's, you know, obviously <clears throat> in my work in other communities, I've, I've been involved in one way or another in the, in sort of the, the, the maturation of some of these really important museums, but it's not an easy undertaking. It's, this is a massive undertaking. You've got to be very strategically focused from, from the name to the marketing plan, to how you're going to fund it, to, you know, what the market is. I mean, it's just no small undertaking, is it, Cynthia? It is not. And this one will house 50,000 square feet. I think in terms of your house and its square footage and how many times you would need to multiply that to get to 50,000, it will be by square footage the largest in the country. And so we know that that's a draw in and of itself. But it is in on the planning now for two years. And so this has not been a slow um, let's just go into it and see what we can do, lackadaisical approach. It is what, something that we're truly, truly waiting to see happen in June. When we come back after the break with Cynthia Minton Walker, we're gonna I want to really zero in on what does that opportunity look like when you look at America and how this museum would fit into sort of other toy train kind of endeavors. How, how, we actually are in a position where we can set ourselves apart. We're going to talk more about that after the, after the break. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coast View. I have my friend Cynthia Mitten Walker. Uh, she, she's a really good friend. I've known her for a number of years. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of joked that the last thing I, I thought I'd ever be talking with her about is model trains. But in a way, I'm kind of joking because the reality is she has so much experience with understanding how to make a museum, especially museums that appeal to kids. But as she pointed out, this is going to appeal to people from one year old to 100 years old. But the but again, her particular skill set in de helping develop strategic plan that will help a a what is Mississippi model train museum. It's going to be called Tran Train Tastic, for a matter of fact, in the New World. How how it makes the transition from being a relatively small but successful museum to this fifty thousand square foot full service museum with all these different elements and. Um, I mean, it's going to be very significant, and I, it's not surprising at all to hear that she's engaged in this. But when you think about what you learned as you guys sort of did a, a current analysis of of the the possibilities for this this uh, this train museum and how it fits into the U.S., what did you learn, and how how important and how specific and how much of an opportunity is this one uh, when you when you look at it relative to the others? Well, you know, we have been in conversations now for a while with some of those other attractions in the area. I didn't know that the World War II Museum gets 85% of their guests from outside the three-state area that surrounds it. And so that tells us that folks are willing to come to this area when it's a meaningful experience that's going to be there waiting on them. So what we know is that this group of enthusiasts are always ready to find where they can see something they haven't experienced before or a technology that they've been interested in being utilized. And so we're looking at all of those questions. What is it that is in the future in front of this hobby, if you'll call it that? And what is it that we need to make sure everyone knows about the skills that go into doing it? This is not just I sat down one day and said, let me just find something to do. These are folks that many of them have mathematical minds and certainly scientific oriented points of view about how all of this works together that really creates a beautiful work of art when it's finished. Um, and so we're adding some elements to ours that will be interactive. We hope that our guests are going to be there between three and four hours and believe that that's going to happen. Because as you go through these layouts, when we're open, you'll press a button and things will happen. An example, we are now currently under construction with about a million dollar layout that's going to parallel the coast in miniature from Highway 90's point of view from Pascagoula down to New Orleans. And so as you go through, an example might be that at the aquarium, you press a button and a dolphin comes out of the tank, hits the ball and goes back down. If you're in Biloxi, you might press it and the light will come on in the lighthouse and it will spin around as you do so. There'll be cars that move across the road when you press a button, or it might be that there's a sailboat out in Jones Parks Harbor that's going to be moving when you press that button as well. So as you go through 52 buttons of pressing activities to see and just get excited about because they're in miniature, 
And it's something that we aren't able to do on a daily basis. I think that that's going to attract people from all over the, the areas of the U.S. and certainly from our local area. But we do also hope to bundle pass with some of these larger attractions like Bell and Graff and World War II Museum so that those folks that are looking for an experience on the coast are drawn here into Mississippi instead of passing us by as they go to those two locations. Well, when I was in New Orleans, I spent a lot of time getting to know the leadership at the World War II Museum. And most people know this, but it's a national museum. It's like the Smithsonian located in New Orleans. Right. And it's very unique in that way. Certainly not comparing uh, the World War II Museum to, to a toy train museum. But the point I'm making, though, is that this this designation that it you guys might be able to claim, hopefully will claim, as the number one museum like it in the United States, what will come from that? You already know this. I can see it in your smile. What will come from this will be a word of mouth in that train community, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And and as the blues music travels from Clarksdale to to Great Britain and Australia and who who knows where else, this same kind of message is going to go around the world. This is an enthusiastic group who share stories and love of these miniature worlds uh, around the world. It's true, though, isn't it? It is definitely true. And we're already talking now with some of the U.S. senators and House representative members for Mississippi because I didn't know until recently that they can open a session by announcing something new in their state. And so they're already saying, yeah, we're willing. Just get it up and running so we can do it. We also know that our competition really is international. Uh, Wonderland in Hamburg, Germany is the person uh, that we're trying to get their nailed down ideas so that we can say, okay, they have this. We want to go one step beyond that so that we're competition with them and maybe even pulling out in front. So we have our targets set already, but we know that many of our folks that we talk to along the way in this planning, they've been to Hamburg, Germany because of the train museum. So it is one of those things that we believe will be an economic driver for our state. We believe it will revitalize some tourism tracks that we have not been able to revitalize yet. And so with all those things coming together, this is good for our state, but it's going to be great for our country too. I'll, oh, wow, I love the way you said that. You we, you know, we talk about that miniature world. I remember on one of my, my family when I was growing up, we, we traveled all over the place. And I don't know if it was to Gatlinburg or, or where it happened, but I went into a, a model train exhibit of some sort. And I never will forget as a young guy sitting there, literally looking at just one man, you know, and looking at the detail on that one man and then the pickup truck that's sitting next to him and this little town that emerged. I don't know what it is, but you, you literally, it's, it, you find yourself in that world as you're studying it. And it has an impact on you. I never will forget the first time that I saw it. I mean, something intriguing. Whether you're, again, 99 years old or a child, the opportunity to go in and study that and, and immerse yourself in it, that's why you say it takes three hours. This is not something you come and look at in sort of this macro global way. It is a very micro engagement, isn't it? It is. And it is one of those things we've been bringing some educators in to get points of view because we will also be offering field trips for kids. Those field trips will start with a STEM lesson, which is science based in their standards. But the educators were saying, I'm trying to wrap my arms around how this is going to be after that lesson, a real in, in, a, a activity for our kids. And they have begun to focus on that. It's like, oh, think of the stories they can tell and write about in literacy just by looking at the details in these different layouts. And so you're exactly right. And there's something about it. It's almost like you're in Alice in Wonderland, you know, when you've gone down the rabbit hole, because now suddenly you're pint sized right along with them. And so one of our pieces that we have under construction right now will be like a Pullman car train that you would sit on if you were on a train, but it's actually our media center and it will be showing a video 
that takes you through that process to where you almost feel like you're here I am my normal size and at the end of this you feel like you've been transported down to a model size human like honey I shrunk the kids kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really do get the sort of creative element of that I mean the opportunity to expand a child's mind the learning piece of this is is incredible. You think about you think about the educational part of it just just for schools, but then you think about families coming in together and going through sort of that same imaginative process. I guess it's going to affect people in different ways, but there's no way to 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 uh, to leave it without some sort of inspiration of some kind. If, and and cer certainly you're going to get entertained too on top of it, but. It's uh, the other thing is the scale of it. I mean, it's so big. There's uh, where did they amass this collection? This is unbelievable. Um, well, it's a co collaboration of folks that have donated and brought in, and then we're having some produce. So um, at this point, we are still not able to say exactly what everyone's going to see when they come in because we're continuing to tweak it and make sure that it meets all the, the needed pieces that we want to have. At this time, we're just excited that we're going to walk in there and every day it's different because construction's going on and we're seeing stud walls go up that weren't there yesterday. Um, we're also starting to do some videos that are chronicling that progress for the community if they'd like to see them. And that is something that helps me get excited and I hope it will them too. Well, you do a good job on those tours. I watched a video last night, for a matter of fact. <clears throat> but one of the things, okay, so you have uh, people coming in from all over the U.S. You have tour tourists that are going to be coming there. But one of the keys to success, as you learned at Lynn Meadows Discovery Center, you've really got to engage local residents as well. So other than the the the, the experience itself, um, what do you think is going to continue to bring people back? Well, we will sell mem memberships so that there are availability to come in and not have to put down your checkbook each time that you come. But we're also going to have n new revisions as time goes on. We'll have expansion. We have additional space that we're going to expand to in about a year, and there'll be a new element there. Um, I believe in doing members only events so that there's always something new coming in and you want just those folks that are supporting you to have the first blush look at that like we do with weddings a lot of times. And so it will be something new and exciting every time they're there. I think that's the key. You got to keep it fresh. Always have something new. When we come back, we'll be joined by Glenn Mueller. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coach View. I have my friend Cynthia Mitten Walker with us. We we had a wonderful two segments together. We're going to continue the conversation as it relates to this incredible train museum, the Mississippi Model Train Museum. Train-tastic. But now we're joined also by Glenn Mueller, who's the president of Domino's on the Coast. And uh, he's just uh, he's also a good friend. I've known him for many years. Glenn, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's uh, good to see you. A train-tastic day. Sorry. It's a train-tastic day. Um, you know, I, I, I joked with Cynthia at the beginning that uh, the last thing I thought I'd be talking to her about is model trains. But then, of course, I went on to clarify to say it's only a natural for someone like Cynthia to be involved, given her past and what she's been involved with. But you're lucky to have her on your team, my friend. Oh, uh, yes. I've uh, worked with her over the years. And uh just really, she always gets involved in the community and really helps out and uh, very organized, which is something <laughs> something we need. And uh, she's just very talented and really appreciate it. And her experience with other museums, at the uh, Lynn Meadows and, and all the things that she's done in the community, it's really helping us out uh, tremendously. I can't. I can only imagine. Yeah, she's a she's a task master. That's what makes her so good at what she does. And listen, you got to be a task master when you're opening up a, a museum of this of this scope and scale. And it will be significant. I already can tell you that it's going to be a very significant addition to the offerings here in coastal Mississippi. Um, listen, I, I have to. People need to understand the story a little bit better. But, you know, your, your and your brother's love of uh, model trains goes back a long way. Give me a little bit of that history. Uh, yes, it definitely goes back uh, a long ways. You know, my brother's, uh, he was my older brother. He's my older brother then and now, of course. But anyhow, but back then growing up, you know, we, he had this uh, train my father gave to him. And, of course, I was pretty young at the time. But, you know, he got me interested in it. And, um, 
and started out with a wooden train. In fact, I even brought it with me today because I still have this little wooden train and, um, and I, you know, it's just this little thing and you can still buy them today, a little different brand. It's a little, you know, wooden train that you do. And I got the little uh, engine, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, and today you can do buy the same thing or very similar. And of course you can get it's battery operated now and you can run it on the same type of track and everything. And then you can get electric and then you can get remote control, of course, these days and all this other stuff. But starting out back then, um, what we learned, I mean, at, at, for me at an age like uh, four or five, uh, it was just fun to play with it. And um, and then we started amassing and collecting trains to the point where we got an electric train and then we got more and more and more. And the way, reason we did is because as a teenager, he he and I really liked doing trains, um, but his friends had them as a kid, but then they wanted to get rid of them. So we wound up collecting them uh, and had over about uh, equivalent, about 12 ping pong tables full of trains. <laughs> so it just went from there. And it was wow. fun to see how many we could build, how, and, and uh, he built the trains and ran the trains a little bit more. And I did the scenery and different things like that. So we complimented each other. It was fun. That's, that, that's, that's, that's so interesting. Hey, before we go any further, we should tell people that your Domino's franchise is a pretty significant uh, business. Tell people about how big your company is. Oh, uh, my goodness. We have uh, 160 stores. We operate in five states, but we're headquartered here right in Gulfport. We're very happy about that. Uh, moved here 42 years ago when Domino's only had a couple hundred stores. And then we signed a deal to build over 100 in 10 years. We did it in five uh, back in the 80s. So we, we came here actually coming up February 6th, uh, 1981. So it'll be our 42nd birthday. But wow. uh, of course, we didn't, you know, have uh, our families or anything. We had kids and, you know, went through the Long Beach school system. And he had four kids. I had five. So the nine kids all went through that. And I, you know, I had a college, many of them to Mississippi uh, schools. But anyhow, um, yeah. So, but our franchise grew quite fast. And now Domino's Pizza has close to 20,000 stores worldwide in about 70 countries. We're, we're still the largest and have been in, uh, for 40 years, the largest franchise. That's that's incredible. And uh, what I know about you guys, uh, even beyond, obviously, this, this train museum conversation, which is going to be a significant contribution to the community, you guys have always been deeply engaged in the community. I mean, that's just been a core value of your company, hasn't it? It is, you know, we try to really, we, we uh, certainly like to be the best uh, and busiest pizza place in every store, every town that we're in, but we also want to provide great opportunities. We employ over 3,300 people. Many of them are part-time uh, and a lot of them, a lot of our managers just started out, you know, delivering pizzas or answering the phones and now they're they're providing for their families. They've got great careers. Uh, we're actually celebrating our 150th this month, uh, franchisee. So we've actually taken our manager in there. So we'll have put out 150 franchisees, people that own their own business. So anyhow, we really liked uh, giving back to our team and then, uh, and then getting involved in the community, give back to the schools. Unfortunately, we have you know hurricanes down here. And so we try to be the first responder, help the first responders, help our team members. We guarantee them food, clothing, shelter, uh, might be temporary shelter, but you know whatever we got to do to help our team in the community during times of uh, hurricanes, pandemics, whatever, whatever's out there. So, so the so the museum that we've been enjoying, um, the the train museum that we've been enjoying in Gulfport on Pass Road, the success of it has been incredible. What is the what is the, how, how do you go about deciding to make such a leap? And I th by the way, once you hear Cynthia sort of talk about the vision and where it's headed, it's uh, it makes so much sense that this leap is going to be taken. However, how do you decide you're going to do that? Because that's that's a big step. Well, you have to know my brother. He said he's the same one that got me excited about building Domino's Pizza stores and 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 being aggressive and and having fun along the way. But anyhow, he he's retired uh, years ago, but uh, has uh, really helped. Uh, this uh, train museum on Pass Road, and it started out with one building, went to a second and a third building. It's it's 7,000 square feet on the north side of Pass Road. Um, anyhow, 
and and it's and it's grown in membership from just a handful to now over 50 members uh, that bring their uh, layouts or just join the club. So it's gone from there, and I've been a part of it uh, ever since. But he's of course doing it more full time, and then this opportunity came to across the street to purchase a building, and uh, it's 40, it's over 40, about 50,000 square feet. Anyhow. Uh, and he and I have gone to over 50 different places. I've been to the one in Hamburg, Germany, went to the one in, in Gatlinburg, uh, there, the Smoky Mountain Railroad, little railroad club there. I've been to over 50 around the world and uh, in many countries and many states. But we wanted to make a very unique one, and we think we could, we'll cover every area. We'll have every scale. It'll be a collection, the largest collection of, of model railroads, and so it'll be different. Uh, there's some great ones out there, uh, but we think we'll have the best collection of all scales, all eras. Cynthia, when you think about Glenn and his brother, it is rare to be in a position like you're in to have two men who are so passionate about it, who've done so much homework about it. They've made terrific partners for you, haven't they? They haven't. And I tell them all the time, I learn about how to deal with my own siblings, even on that level, by watching them. They're, they are amazing for that. But I also love how they solve problems. You know, I tell anybody that listens, so cover your ears, Glenn, they are some of the smartest people I've ever met. And so I'm learning every time I'm with them but I also am watching how they problem solve. And I know this is going to be a success because anytime we felt like that could be a roadblock, they solve it. And so I'm only grateful that they solve their issues if they have them instead of putting me in the middle to be a mama type and say, <laughs> you know, guys, sit over there and get it solved, you know. So they never involve anybody except handle it themselves, and that's a pretty exciting thing to see when you're in my position well they didn't hire a mediator <laughs> they hired <laughs> they hired someone who could help them work through the immense number of details it takes to work through to make a you know literally what's going to be a world-renowned museum happen here in coastal mississippi you know, Glenn, when you think about the goals you guys have for that museum what what yeah you know, I'm, I'm sure that they are there are a lot of lofty goals but what to, just talk to me about what you had guys had in mind well, we obviously um, wanted to build something for all ages. You know, uh, I know a lot of the toy companies are looking at themselves differently now and they're calling themselves play companies. And I think the pandemic really opened up people's eyes for the need for, um, you know, maybe even staying at home or, or getting more hands-on type activities. Um, and really uh, appreciating that. So anyhow, what we wanted, what I've done and what I've learned and what I think is part of the museum that both Richard and I want to make sure is that, yes, playing with trains and modeling and trying to build little dioramas or little scenes, um, that kind of thing can appeal to so many people. But as in your playing, you're actually learning. And then once you're learning, you're growing, and then we celebrate. So we want to do that all at this museum. Yeah, it's interesting. I talk about coastal Mississippi, coastal Mississippi being a collection of unique communities, each with its own special sense of place. When they're there at the Model Museum seeing sort of this, this micro world, each one of them has its own special sense of place, and they have this opportunity to sort of immerse themselves in that. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Glenn Mueller and my dear friend, Cynthia Minton Walker. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to Coast View. I'm having a terrific conversation with my old friend, Glenn Mueller, and Cynthia Mitten Walker, who I have uh, incredible admiration for her community involvement. And she's just a good person, uh, very inspiring. And, you know, when you think about it, if, if someone is not a taught model train enthusiast who, who doesn't really get the, the the scope and scale of what we're talking about, Glenn, why don't you just take a second and tell, first of all, where is the building located? And when you walk in, what will you see? Kind of, kind of walk me through the layout of this museum. Sure. Uh, it'll be at 615 Pass Road. Currently, it's across the street at 504 Pass Road. But we're going to take that 7,000 square foot operation, move over to 50,000 square foot operation. Anyhow, when you walk in, uh, you're going to be able, you'll be inside the tall ceilings, uh, very large building, very open, but you'll actually see some trains running a little bit 
in the distance and some with mountains and different scene bridges and all that kind of thing. Uh, there'll be a gift shop to your right. And a little bit to the right will be a STEAM, a, a STEM room where for uh, that kind of educational thing, uh, like a classroom type thing. And to your left will be, actually it looks like a rail car and it will be, uh, where you go inside and you watch a movie. Once you pay a ticket you know, to go in, you, you go through and you'll be able to sit down in this rail car and then see a little video, a little bit about the museum so you can plan your day. Then uh, also you'll be able to look through into the museum in different directions and see it's a much bigger place. So when you first walk in, you're gonna see uh, probably about 15,000 square feet, but you also see the rest of the, what goes into the other parts of the museum. On the uh, first uh, part on, uh, I guess when you, on your left there, you're gonna see uh, over a dozen layouts uh, that are very interactive. So each layout will have things operating and you could, and you'll be invited or uh, intrigued to press certain buttons, different things happen. And there'll also be different exhibits along the way where we've worked with uh, Kidzibits as a company to help us help educate people and get them interested in learning more about scale, more about um, how to design things, um, how to train to work, that kind of thing. How to do your own model, how to build your own model railroad if you want to. In the back, there'll actually be play structures, there'll be birthday party rooms, <laughs> Of course, you know, the restroom, that I think. But, uh, and then when you walk into the warehouse, it's quite big and there'll be this huge play structure where kids of different ages will be able to ride very simple trains to more advanced trains. Uh, so there'll be the model trains up front and then the back will be where kids can actually ride trains. There'll be a huge play structure that'll look like a big train. And then you could, then there'll be these windows where you can see outside where there'll be riding trains and other pavilions and, and things like that. Wow. So it's got so many, it's, it's like a mini Six Flags. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> it's going to have a little bit of everything, you know, uh, uh, but it, it, it really, for those that have gone to our museum, which has been operating about, uh, you know, eight years, um, but Traintastic will be much bigger. It'll be, uh, I guess, six times bigger or so. And um, and it, it will just have a lot more and a lot more engaging uh, hands-on type things where uh, people could learn of all ages. And so uh, it, it'll be something there for all ages. And we're also going to tie in the coast and the coast history, the, the use of trains, but other fun things around everything from Lynn Meadows, that have a little model there, and it just different different things about the coast. Equestrian Center, uh, oh my goodness, charter fishing, uh, the list goes on. That's so cool. You know, it occurred to me when you were talking, when you started talking about scale again, that the mathematics involved in that are really actually quite important, aren't they? Uh, very important. In fact, I was uh, just this past weekend, had my, I, I was helping my grandson. He's four years old. It reminds me a lot. Anyhow, he wanted to build this little, took the blocks and wanted to build this thing for his train. Now, I knew it wasn't going to work because he didn't build it wide enough. He didn't know that. And he got real frustrated because when he tried to put the train in, the box, the thing sort of fell apart. Then he builds the walls too high, and I knew that wasn't going to work either. So I was trying to coach him on how how to do it without <clears throat> the blocks falling. And then even building a roof, it collapsed. And he was getting frustrated, but the whole time he's learning, and it just and that's the way it was for me. And so and it actually helped me with my business to learn it or remodeling a house and things like that. So just from this whole experience, um, yeah, I think people will really find it fun and fascinating, and they'll learn a lot more about the coast and, and appreciate little things about the coast that will be throughout the museum. So, Cynthia, what you've been able to observe that in the eight years they've had the current museum, they've been able to say, boy, if we had that or if we had this or if we had room, we could do that over there. And what they've really, take to, it's been sort of this like test tube that they've been living in where aspiration has flowed and now it's going to all come to fruition in this 50,000 square foot building. Uh, but that's true. That's what they've done, isn't it? It is true. And what's been interesting is we've learned from the past, but as soon as this has really begun to take off and be known in the community, there are also people who are coming in saying, you know what, maybe you should do that. Um, we're learning so much and we are also trying to align the real trains down to principles and things that are important there 
to connect them with our model trains concepts. One of the things that we learned, and this is something that I just learned it last night, and it's like everyone needs to know this, that did you know that I, every railroad crossing, there's a little plaque that has a number that if you have a problem, if your truck is stuck there or there's something that's going on, you can call that and they will stop all of the real trains on the tracks within 70 miles of that crossing. Imagine how much safer it would be if we all knew that. And so there's things that we're learning that we'll share with the community that really matter. Mm -hmm. And then there's things that we're going to do just to make them smile. Train-tastic Mississippi Model Train Museum, 50,000 square foot in, Long in uh, Guphorn. And it's going to be a sort of world-renowned facility. Congratulations. We'll, we'll check in with you guys as this thing is getting built. Great. Thank you so much. Great to, great to visit with you, Cynthia and Glenn Mueller. We'll see you uh, soon. Talk to you have tomorrow. A, have a fantastic day.